and we're live. I'm Jay Skinner, and this is the Buyers and Sellers Show pre-show. I get kicked off a couple of minutes early and give everyone a chance to get on. Today, we're going to talk about those live visits that we're starting to have again. And if you're thinking about, oh, should we do it? Well, you know, we should. We want to do it a little bit different. Hopefully you've been doing it like this for a long time. But we're going to give you four points. I'm going to give you four points. Like an agenda that just virtually guarantees success. How about that? Because if you go in with a roadmap, a track to follow, that's simple and you can do, just try it. You'll be surprised how good it gets. This is the girl from Ipanema. Come on, it's the Buyers and Sellers Show. People are getting on from all around the world. How cool is that? And we're live. I'm Jay Skinner, and you've just joined the Buyers and Sellers Show live right now on Friday mornings at 10.35 a.m. Eastern Time. Want to know more about it? You can always go to thejskinner.com and enjoy. Uh, if you click on the little tab there at uh, on my website that takes you to the playlist, you can see all my shows and events that uh, could be valuable and look at the topics and check things out. Love having you. Another important thing about this show is that it's interactive. And so over here in the comments section, I'm going to just do an example right now. I'll put up the website, W-J-A-Y. The W uh, the T H E J A Y S K I N N E R dot com, and I'll post that. And on most of your um, browsers, there you'll see that pop up. And uh, I want to encourage you to uh, uh, check out the website if you want to connect somehow and uh, see more about my life as the plastic palette guy.com and as the CEO extender.com. And uh, you can find out more about that. And while we're here, look, we got people coming on. This is fantastic. Tanner Kirby's Kirby's Tanner Kirby's. I hope I said your name right. So glad you're here. Thank you for coming. And where are you from? Uh, Love to that. Love to know where you're watching from right now. Please, uh, please Come back to me and let me know. That'd be great. Let's see. We got Chris Harris. Good morning. So glad to have you, Chris. There is a guy that's like Mr. Tech Genius dude that's got some fantastic technology going out there in industry. And uh, man, so nice to have you here. I'm honored by your presence, Chris. So today we're talking about that that situation that uh, uh, we're in right now, we're assessing about whether or not to get out, start having a visits and that sort of thing. Um, remember, 
regardless of where you are, the golden or the silver rule is do unto your vendors as you want your customers to do unto you. So that's one of the big tenets of the buyers and sellers show. And the other one is the green rule. Do for yourself what you're asking others to pay you to do for them. Think about that. Think about the silver rule and the green rule as you proceed. Looks like we got some more comments. This is great. I got there, Chris. Dawn, Dawn Marmaduke, good morning, Jay. And you're from Pollock Pines, California. And Dawn Marmaduke is the head of sales for BioSweep Systems. And this is a technology. Can you imagine that there's a technology out there that will actually remove the odor remove the odor after a big fire from your house or your business. And BioSweep is a big international company and she's the head of sales for that and very smart about it. And she's going to be my guest in May. And I believe the date's going to be Friday, May 15th. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, Dawn, but I want you to come for that because you're going to get introduced to something that's pretty cool. And a lot of people just simply don't know about it uh, when it comes to eliminating odors uh, from, you know, disaster areas or places where they've had trouble, either a fire or, you know, any number of odors that uh, can accumulate either in homes or businesses. And uh, Don, I'm just excited about that visit. So glad you're here. So moving on here, it's time for these live visits. And this outline or agenda that we're getting into here is going to give you the ideas and the thoughts and hopefully the, uh, uh, how do you call it, the roadmap, a simple one that you go, wow, I had no idea it was so simple. And if you read the uh, promotional that came along with it, we're going to review a little bit of this uh, that was on the inter invites. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but do you remember that, uh, you know, the, the old days uh, really <clears throat> and how important face-to-face -face was? Well, I remember those days. And I was doing computers and virtual appointments and using GoToMeeting. That was the big one back then. Uh, back even in the, uh, I think it was the early 2000s. And certainly was uh, doing uh, uh, virtual logging into the office from a distance uh, back in the 90s. So I've never been a stranger to virtual communications. And but let's just think back for a minute the way it used to be. Remember showing up with that great big long PowerPoint in your computer that maybe you hefted in over your shoulder in a bag? How about this one? Someone was trying to teach you how to do a presentation and do a live show somewhere in a conference room or whatever, and they'd say, tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. Now, if anyone knows the originator of that phrase, I would just love to know and give them credit for it. But, uh, I mean, you, you may have said that. It's like there was an outline. Let's see who else is here. I got some some other things popping in here. There's Dawn and, oh, okay, good. I just don't want to miss anyone. So uh, uh, Tanner or Tanner, where are you from? If you type it in, it hasn't come through yet, but I would sure love to know where you are coming from as well. Uh, let's see. Good. Boom. This. There we go. And as you know, I'm working a couple different screens here and trying to manage this. So banners. There we go. How about this one? You'd show up with that beautifully crafted 125 megabyte PowerPoint with pictures and movies. Load it on your hard drive if you're lucky. And then it's like fire that thing up and Boy, you're about ready to impress them. You remember that? Then you tell them all about you. I remember. I remember the, I like yesterday, the sales trainings. Tell them all about you, who you are, where you are, what you come from, all the great things you can do, all the great projects you've done, all your capabilities, all about you, all about you, all about you. And then, and then what? 
Well, as I recall, it was more than once. I was guilty 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I was guilty. Were you guilty? You get down, you realize that hour that had been allocated for you guys is now down to you got 15 or 10 or five minutes left and your prospects are doing like this and he hasn't even got a word in edgewise. Oh my gosh. And then now all of a sudden you're trying to wrap it up and come up with some next steps or whatever. It's so uncomfortable. And you're all, you're like, he's standing up. You know, it's time for you to stand up, stuff everything in your bag and start moving towards the door. And you're shaking hands and talking about next steps. Are you guilty? Did that ever happen to you? Well, <laughs> I wish I wish I could say, oh, no, not me. That's perfect. But you know what? I, I paid attention to a lot of those old sales trainings. And I think it was the best I had, the best we had back then. But, you know, even through all that time, there were greats out there doing it differently. And it wasn't long before I was doing it differently as well. And I got in touch with special smart people and got into some classes that taught me some things I never thought of. And then there was just that natural feeling that said, this can't be right. Now, unfortunately, there's still people doing this, showing up to these meetings with their 125 megabyte PowerPoint that starts with their logo on the front page, and it's all about them. Turn that presentation upside down. Start with the end, what you've normally done. If you never get to the beginning, who cares? And quite frankly, if you can just get on the internet, you can show them your web page and that should be a good enough page to really help you get somewhere there we go and look at that you're from turkey izmir oh welcome welcome i i love it i love turkey people i love people from turkey i'm so glad you came tanner thank you thank you for sharing ellie got a smiley face from chris yep that's good how about that i was so excited about uh uh, when when the international people, which it's probably 1045, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's probably 5 in the evening. It's about time for dinner if you eat that time. Thanks for taking time out for the broadcast. So we're thinking about it. Let me give you the, here's why you came. And I, I don't want to spend too much time on playing music and talking about the old days. So here we go. Number one build rapport. Okay. So you walk in, you're there for your appointment. And just remember, set that appointment. And I'll tell you what, when you're set the appointment, the expectations with the, with the person, it's like, say, it's going to be great. Uh, make sure you know if they're going to have a, um, uh, you know, are we going to be in a conference room? If there a screen, is there a computer hooked up to that? Ferret all that stuff up out when before you even get there. And let them know your expectations. That uh, uh, if if you want to get on the internet to show them stuff, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. Um, then sometimes, really, most of the time, you don't even need to bring your laptop any longer because people are set up to put you right on the internet. And if you have your presentation on a little thumb drive, you can bring it in, put it right in their computer. I tell you that some people are a little wary about that. So I always suggest that if you can work with your uh, digital marketing people to make sure your website is a presentation in and of itself, then if you want to show things and play show and tell uh, with visual things like that, it's best that it just be on your website. That's really the best way. Anyway, so how are we going to build rapport? And you, you come in having done some research on that individual and on their company. And the way that you're going to build rapport, it's like, remember, I'm going to contrast with the old days. You walk around, you look for pictures of things you recognize. There's a baseball game and a picture of a guy doing this and a, and a you know, dead moose on the wall or something. And it's like, oh, you like hunting or, oh, you like golfing or, oh, you like this. And somehow you feel obligated to talk about sports and all the stuff that they know about. And try to find some common ground based on things that you know and like. I mean, that can take a half an hour. And it's like, I'm not sure he really invited you to come to talk about your hobbies and all that kind of stuff. 
what he wants to know is, can we work together? Is this some, you're there for a reason. You wouldn't be there. They wouldn't allow you in otherwise. And so what do you need in terms of rapport? You need to show that you came prepared. Did you scope that individual out on social media? Did you look at their social media profile? Did you Google them? Did you look at their company? Did you look at the things that they're doing? And so are you walking in well prepared? So that when you're sitting down there talking and say, this is great, the first thing that you do is you ask a question that's very specific to them and their business based on something you saw on the internet. Like maybe you saw a picture of a, uh, you know, maybe it's a construction business or something. You see a picture of an old decrepit home and, and then right beside it, there's one that's really great. And you're looking at the improvements that they made and you're saying, man, how did they do that? This is unbelievable. Well, ask him. Say, hey, when I was when I was you know looking at your company and and getting prepared, just same as I was getting prepared for our visit, I saw this one thing that showed this and that um, on your web page, and I was amazed at how you did that. Could you tell me a little bit about that project. How did you do that? Make it an open end question, or you talk about something else. Or say, I was look, I was I was doing some preparation here. It looks like you're involved with not only this business, but gee, Mister Smith, you're like the president of five different not for profit boards. Uh, tell me about that. And if you can say specifically, you know, it's like you're on this ministry or that, or you do like that. Have you ever been to Africa to be part of that? And has it gotten to that point? Tell me about that. Now it's interesting. And then they'll tell you about themselves, about what's interesting to them. And guess what? You come prepared. You understand their business. You understand the importance of that individual and knowing about the people you're dealing with before you get into business. They respect you and they're ready for the next step. Now, what's the next step? I call it ask, how do you? Ask, how do you? Well, what's that mean? Ask Mr. Smith, how do you deal with this problem that I'm here to present alternatives and solutions to? Now, you might not say that exactly that way, but then you might. Let's make an example. Let's say I'm selling a lawn mowing service for your business. Say, Mr. Smith, right now, how do you deal with tall grass, weeds, and, and uh, uh, you know the whole landscaping program right now uh, here at your company? And then just be quiet. Don't make it a multiple choice question. Again, every time you ask a question, avoid the temptation to present three or four possible answers as if the person you're talking to is not smart enough to come up with their own. Believe me, if they're not smart enough to come up with their own answers, they'll probably say, gee, I don't know how to answer that. And then you say, well, here's what I'm thinking about. Then you can give them some ideas. But let them come up with their own idea to see where they go. How do you deal with maintenance of your CNC machines now, Mr. Smith? I mean, when they break down, what happens? And they talk to you. And they tell you about it. And you listen. And they'll, they'll pause when they kind of explain how they do it. And you're not here to do anything but listen and understand and think, can you improve upon what they're doing? And as they're explaining it, here's a great thing to say. And I've had customers tell me that was pretty valuable. They'll explain how they deal with that problem. How do you deal with computer? I call it break fix. When computers break or printers break or things like that in your office, and then they need to be fixed. How are you handling that these days? They explain it. They tell you what they do. And I try not to laugh if, if it's like, oh, my gosh, this is pathetic don't don't smile or get sarcastic don't become cynical and just look right at them and say how's that working for you and then they'll say well or really i will tell you about 70 percent of the time or 80 percent of the time they're going to tell you well I thought I was a real genius at that, but it's not really working so well. Really. 
bumper questions, comments to keep it going. Now you bring out and understand what the real problem might be and where you might be able to offer some solutions. Hmm. And then what about this? What about that? Until they've kind of laid out why you're there. Understand that customer, that potential customer, probable customer, knows what you do already. They've probably prepared as much as you did, if not more, to see you. They've checked out your online profile. They've checked out your company. When you called up, you had to give them some idea of what you were doing in order to get any interest at all to have an appointment. So you, again, you haven't just gone into this big spiel about all the stuff that you can do. You simply are asking questions and they're loving you because you're doing the right thing. This is not a trick. So after they've explained it and then you said, well, how's that working for you? And that's saying that, how's that working for you? I don't know where, who invented that question. Was it Dr. Phil? I don't know. Someone can tell me in comments. Then the next thing is I call it idea. Mr. Prospect or Jim, I, I like generally get on the first name basis with people. Jim, that gives me an, I have an idea. Are you, are you ready for an idea? you interested in ideas that relates to what you just now described, how we might be able to work together. Make him say yes. He might say, heck no, get out of here. I don't like you. No, he's not going to say that. Not if you've run the appointment up to this point this way. He's going to be like, yeah, that's why you're here, man. Give me an idea. People love to get an idea. And then he's already told you his problems, what's going on, giving you an idea of the situation. So well, we you get one more question. You may have a little bit of qualifying questions. Tell me this one area here before I tell you, I want to make sure this is right. What about this or that? Oh, yeah, we do like this. Okay, good. Or do you pay for that service right now? Or or uh, how do you pay? Or it's like, just to help me understand, say, well, here's what we could do. Uh, as you, I don't know if you had a chance to get into our website or not, but what we do is, and it relates to what you're talking about because I believe that we could do this, this, and this. You don't need to like do a great big long talk about how qualified you are and all the people that choose you and, and all that. So it's just to tell them what you can do. Here's how we could help get rid of that problem. It's like, oh, there you go. There you go. And uh, uh, hey, hey, Mark Gassard. Greetings. Good to see you. Glad you're here. So that's the idea section. Can I give you an idea? And then what you used to do at the end, you're doing up at the beginning. You still haven't told them about how long you've been in business and all that stuff. Holy cow, that's what you got the internet for. You guys already seen it. You already got an hour. Look, I've been doing this for almost a half an hour already. Look how fast time flies. Better tell them what you're going to do. Better tell them what you're going to do and how you can solve it. And uh, just get right into the general idea. Now, if you remember, and I'm going to call this up because I want you to, uh, um, I want you to see this part of the process that uh, I do and recommend with my customers. I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna go to my website, which is easy, and show it to you right here. It's called the PDT system, the PDT system. I click on this, I'm gonna share the screen. Because as you get into your conversation, you, you need to be just talking to the person like a normal person and say, does this sound like the right direction. And we're going to bring this right up here. Here's an example. Let's just grow this screen a little bit so you can see it better. Boom. Whoops. We'll go the right way. Let's grow this thing. There we go. Now, where are you in the process when you're talking to them? You can go to my website, look at the PDT system to get this. But you're looking at preliminary budget, time frame discussions to determine if the project is possible and worth pursuing further. 
that's about as far as you're going to get on this. We're just talking about what you've heard, your idea on how you can do it. And doesn't everyone want some idea what they might be getting into from a dollars and cents standpoint? I recommend you even show them your process, like your steps one through seven of how you do a, uh, how you do a deal. So they know, well, I'm on step one and we get down to step seven must have been a big deal, good deal. But talk to them and try to get into just step one and say, hey, if, it, if it sounds good, let's talk in more detail. Then we'll go to step two, which is a preliminary concept and a formal proposal that you can buy from. People will respect this approach. And during this idea phase, they're kind of saying, yeah, I get it. I like it. And it flows so naturally into what's next. What are we going to do next? And as I was showing you on PDT here, the next step is look at a preliminary concept, submit a formal proposal. I don't know. If you're selling landscaping, landscaping services, maybe the next step is hire me. Let's get started. We can be out in the out on your lawn tomorrow and make this place a beautiful place you'll be proud of. Talk like that. You'll be proud of. It's beautiful. Use emotional word pictures to explain to them why they want you, that it's going to be awesome and they're going to be happy. Find adjectives to describe the feelings that people are going to have when they, when they work with you and how proud they're going to be to have that beautiful lawn or that fixed machine or, or, that IT problem is going to go away. And next time someone's computer is not working right or something, you they're just not going to have to worry about it. It's going to be wonderful. So simple. Isn't it about so simple? Sharon, good morning. And today Sharon's going to be live a consecutive 930 days of consecutive lives for her business. She's at the Sharon Hoffmeister.com. Congratulations, Sharon. And happy Earth Day to you too. Sounds good to me. Let's see who else is coming over there. There we go. Mark says, COVID's over. Let's move forward and remove F U D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Amen to that. And uh, when we're doing that, use a process like I'm talking to you right here that's simple, easy, doesn't wear people out, makes them glad you came. Simple, easy, doesn't wear people out and makes them glad you came. And you can walk in and just make friends. Make them laugh. Make them glad you came. So what's number one? Rapport. Number two, ask, how do you handle this problem? Three, you have an idea. An idea based on what you just heard. And number four, next steps that are reasonable toward a proposal. Depending on what's involved in your sales cycle, you know, it may be time to just go ahead and ask for an order at that point. A lot of businesses, it's not a one call close, so to speak. It's multiple visits. But if you handle it like this, you may figure out over here in, in idea that there's no next to it. They don't have that problem. When you hear the guy explain how he solves this problem and it's solved, you may just have to look at him and say, awesome, man. You are doing great. I couldn't do any better for you. Uh, however, would it be interesting to, and this is one of the things, it's like I, you can have respect for whatever it is they're doing, but they may have a reason that you don't know about why they want to change. So they're telling you how they solve this problem and it's wonderful. Give them a chance to buy, even if you don't see that they would be interested in buying. At least give them a chance. At least give them a chance. I would say that there have been times that salespeople have walked out of a presentation convinced that the customer has all they need from someone else. It's all solved. That the problem that that salesperson brings in terms of solutions, the solution just isn't needed here after you did your fact finding, which is kind of your ask how you do. 
but give the customer a chance to say, well, here's why you're here. And so that wrap up might be, Mr. Customer, it sounds like you're doing great. Things are going well for you. Uh, but I'm here and I'm very interested to know what you have in mind. Do you have something in mind how we could work together or something I could bring to the table for you that's especially a reason why I'm here today? Because you're there because they invited you to come, because they allowed you to come. So there's a reason why you're sitting there with them now. Find out. Say, wow, it seems like you guys got everything together. Why am I here? It's like, if it's going to be like that, figure it out real early because you may find out, well, Jay, I'm getting ready to start another business and I need someone that does this and I want to spread my risk and have two different services doing that. Or, well, Jay, here's why you're here. I was interested to see what you're doing compared to what I got and get this sense of, could I do better? Is it a better deal? And then I might say, well, what do you think? I like you, Jay. I want to figure out how we can work together. Okay, super. Then you come up with next. So don't walk away without giving them a chance to explain why you're there and what they think maybe could happen. Just think about it. You never, never know. Okay, how about that? You know, a half hour sure goes fast. It was fun talking about this. If you have a comment, just understand uh, that on these, uh, these comments that they come in a little late. So once I start to shut down and everything, uh, if I miss you, I'm going to, I'll try to comment back to you uh, just through the stream here, uh, through the uh, comments. But you can always get a hold of me. I'd we'll love to talk to you and get to know you. This is me. Let's see, right there. Boom. And you can email me. You can go to my website. You can call. But I love having you. This is the Buyers and Sellers Show. Today we talked about those steps that you can take in these live visits that might be different from what you're used to. And the question is, do you have the guts to try it? Just like this. Just try it. Let me know what you think after you do. Bye now. Have a great day. See you next Friday. Oh, yeah. Next Friday is going to be Ruben Dua. He's the CEO of Dub dot com d-u-b-b dot com and it's a service where can you imagine you can send out video emails and video texts and put calls to action on it it's very easy to use and he's the ceo and co-founder of that company and he's a really smart guy we're going to talk about him about his business and about how he got to the point where he is it's going to be very interesting you're going to love ruben what a nice guy what a nice guy so uh with all that being said, let's see, I got one more comment there. Mark says, no one ever listened themselves out of a sale or business transaction. That is the truth. Listen and ask questions and make a friend. So catch you next Friday with Ruben and we will have a blast. See you. The Buyers and Sellers Show. I'm Jay Skinner and we're here every Friday morning. 10.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Live. And you can catch these broadcasts on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. They're all piled up. I like the YouTube list especially. Easy to see the topics and check things out. Look forward to seeing you again. See you next week. Thank you for coming.